Hi, uh, my name is Dr. Uh, Dawal Bhausar, and I'll be talking about wound healing uh, today. Uh, when we talk about wound healing, usually we describe a healing of a wound that was created surgically, so an in, incised wound. But then this uh, biologic uh, description applies to any and all kind of wounds. Skin is the largest organ uh, on the body. It provides uh, protection from the elements and in fact the organisms. It, it also provides uh, protective sensation. When it's breached, there can be infection and uh, loss of thermal regulation. Like in large burn patients uh, with a large surface uh, area of skin, patients can uh, become hypothermic uh, very easily. This photograph shows the normal structure of the skin. Skin is made up of two uh, layers. One, uh, the superficial layer is called epidermis and the deeper layer is called dermis. Below the skin, usually, there is a layer of uh, fat. The superficial layer of the skin, which is called epidermis, is made up of multiple layers of cells. The superficial most layer, which is uh, made up of uh, stratum corneum or dead cells, um, makes keratin. The thickness of the keratin varies in various parts of the body. The thickest keratin is on the sole of the uh, feet and uh, palm of the hands. The lowermost layer is made up of stratum basale, the cells that can replicate and these are the cells that provides new cells or new la uh, layering uh, in the process of healing. Deeper layer is called uh, dermis. The dermis is made up of two layers. The one that is superficial or near to the epidermis is called papillary dermis and the deeper part is called reticular dermis. These are two different types of dermal components as the collagen within these two layers is uh, structured differently. The collagen in the papillary dermis is very compact and when you feel it, it's firm and it gives the firmness or the aesthetic look of the skin. There are dermal uh, papilla or the epidermal projections into the papillary dermis and that's why it's called papillary dermis. The reticular dermis which is the lower uh, part or deeper part of the dermis has more loosely packed uh, collagen fibers but it is vascular and it has many Nerve, uh, nerve endings. So what is a wound? Wound is any break in the skin or an organ surface caused by violence or surgical incision. And wound healing is restoration of that continuity after wounding. Wound healing is usually described in three classic phases. Inflammation, proliferation and remodeling. The phase of inflammation is for cleaning up. Proliferation is to fill the gap and remodeling is to make it more functional and normal like the uh, original tissue. Hemostasis is the process of clotting of blood and that starts immediately after the wounding or injury. That is also the starting point for the inflammation as the clot that is made up of platelets releases the growth factors and uh, chemo uh, kinds that attracts inflammatory cells to the wound. Inflammatory phase starts within 6 to 8 hours after injury, that is after the formation of platelet cloud and release of factors uh, by, uh, from platelet degranulation. The first cells to come to the wound are polymorph nuclear cells and after that uh, monocytes after extravasation which are called macrophages come to the wound also. These cells collectively remove all the dead tissues. Your inflammation reaches its height at 24 to 48 hours after the uh, wound creation. And remember, with this we are talking about a surgically created wound which doesn't have much of the dead tissues except on the surface of the uh, edges of the wound. But uh, for wounds like burn wound and other uh, large traumatic wounds, there is a chance that inflammatory phase may continue for a longer time and many times for a very long time. These inflammatory cells, polymorph nuclear uh, and uh, macrophages, they release growth factors and these growth factors prepare the wound for proliferation. The growth factors attract the cells which are important for wound healing or filling the gap. The proliferation phase starts approximately 48 hours after surgical wound creation. It has distinct four events that go on. Usually these events go on simultaneously except for the last event which is reapitalization. The events that characterize proliferation are fibroplasia, matrix deposition 
angiogenesis and reapatalization. The eventual result of proliferation phase is creation of granulation tissue. Now in a surgical wound we do not see a surgically created wound we do not see granulation tissue a large exposed wound the one that is shown in this photograph eventual result of the phase of proliferation is formation of granulation tissue. It is a vascular bed highly vascular and will take skin graft. Fibroplasia are the main cells running this event are the fibroblasts. Fibroblasts are activated fibrocytes. Fibroblasts migrate from the edges of the wound and they secrete almost all the content of the wound including collagen, glycosaminoglycans, elastin, fibronectin, protease. The activity of the fibroblast increase as the inflammation uh, decreases which is around third day. They migrate and proliferate in response to fibronectin, platelet derived growth factors, fibroblast growth factor, transformant growth factor and C5A. Collagen deposition is the most important event in the wound healing. It is the most important component of the matrix as it makes up a large portion of the matrix. Its deposition starts around third day as the fibroblasts start coming to the wound and it continues for two to four weeks depending on the wound size. And remember again this we are talking about a wound that is surgically created but a large wound like burn wound will take a long time for complete feeling uh, with the collagen. Collagen is secreted initially as a pro-collagen which is converted to tropocollagen and finally to the mature form of collagen. Deposition of collagen uh, varies and it is dependent upon uh, many uh, variable factors. Age is one of the most important factor that affects uh, deposition of collagen in uh, human wound healing. The elderly patients do not have adequate fibroblast activity for uh, active deposition of collagen. This activity differs significantly from the young child and that is why we notice that young children heal really well and fast. Similarly tension, pressure and stress have their effects on collagen deposition. Tension on a wound in induces activity of the fibroblasts and thus induces formation of collagen. This tension is usually seen when a wound crosses the joint lines. A wound or across the elbow or across axilla with the movement of the upper extremity can continuously create tension on the wound and can induce collagen uh, formation. Pressure works in a completely reverse direction. Uh, with the pressure you can reduce formation of, uh, formation of collagen. Matrix. Matrix is the substance that fills the gap between the cells and capillaries. It is the most uh, important end result of the proliferation phase. Most of the matrix components come from fibroblasts and these are glycosaminoglycans, heparin sulfate, chondroitin sulfate, hyaluronic acid and dermatone sulfate. The photograph uh, on the left shows a schematic diagram of matrix components as they are in a human dermis. Angiogenesis is a process by which new capillaries grow within the wound matrix. They provide the nutrition for the whole process. The angiogenesis or neoangiogenesis is evident in a healing wound as wound erythema. As the wound heals and gets apathalized, the density of the capillaries decreases and it reduces the edema as well as the redness. Angiogenesis starts with the release of macrophage derived angiogenic factor in response to low oxygen tension. Macrophages while working in the center of the wound to remove the dead tissues they um, can sense the low oxygen tension and releases this factor. Now this chemoattractant and other uh, growth factors like basic uh, fibroblast growth factor and VEGF induces migration of endothelial cells from the margins of the wound. These endothelial cells bud from capillary ends on the mar uh, edges of the wound and they produce initially when they grow they produce a cylinder of cells. Once they reach their target they stop growing. The center of the cylinder undergoes apoptosis and the lumen is created. The endothelial cells coils together and bind with a fibrin. 
repetalization is the eventual uh, event in the phase of proliferation. It includes coverage of granulation tissue with the epidermal cells and it in fact completes the acute wound healing. It reestablishes the barrier and reestablishes the protection against infection, thermal regulation, sensation. Repetalization includes migration of epithelial cells from the margins of the wound. The cells of the uh, basal layer of epidermis, they can uh, duplicate and send the new keratinocytes towards the center of the wound. These keratinocytes migrate towards the center and once they reach the other end or other side of the keratinocytes, they stop due to contact inhibition. Now for the migration of these keratinocytes, they need a vascular and clean bed equivalent to a clean granulation tissue. These epithelial cells migrate with their feet which are lamellopodia and phyllopodia. The forward uh, movement uh, is made possible by acting rich cyto uh, uh, cytoskeleton. The coordinated processes of addition, assembly and disassembly will make them walk over the granulation tissue. On the next slide, there is a video of epithelial cells migrating in a petri dish. This video was filmed over 48 hours and is shown here in a couple of seconds. But this is how exactly the epithelial cells migrate over granulation tissue and fill the gap. Wound contraction is the centripetal movement of the wound edges and the maximum rate is 0.75 millimeters per day. The wound contraction depends on the degree of tissue laxity and shape of the wound. With its lax tissues or relaxed tissues in the neck and some of the areas of axilla, the wounds can contract really quickly in these areas. A circular wound uh, contracts faster than a rectangular wound. The wound contraction is also helped by the uh, five myofibroblasts. Myofibroblasts are specialized fibroblasts with actin, uh, smooth muscle actin within their uh, cytoplasm. This is a photograph of network of myofibroblasts within a wound matrix. Once the wound heals completely, the process of remodeling starts as soon as possible after that. The collagen remodeling is the main event during the remodeling. It depends on balance between new collagen formation and uh, destruction of the collagen. Destruction of the collagen is helped by collagenase and matrix metalloproteinases. These are the enzymes which are secreted, uh, at uh, collagenase is secreted by the fibroblasts. The goal of remodeling is to create a balance between collagen formation and collagen destruction so that adequate amount of collagen is in the uh, wound matrix. Fibronectin gradually disappears during the pro after the wound healing completes. Hyaluronic acid and glycosaminoglycans are replaced by proteoglycans. The residual water is resorbed from the wound. Due to uh, resorption of the water, the wound volume uh, reduces and this allows for the collagen fibers to lie close to each other. By collagen fibers approximating with each other, they can cross link and improve the quality of the uh, wound matrix. Remodeling begins approximately 21 days after injury and which continues indefinitely. Most of the remodeling and the returning of the wound strength uh, is ex uh, achieved by 90 days. Strength of the wound is uh, tested as a tensile strength and bursting strength. Tensile strength is the load capacity per unit area of the wound. The tensile strength or maximum tensile strength is achieved in around 90 days. And this is uh, usually around 80% of the original strength. For dermis, this provides adequate strength to withstand the mechanical stress. Bursting strength is force required to break a wound regardless of its dimension. Now I would like to talk a little bit about the fetal wound healing and how it differs from adult wound healing. The main characteristics of fetal wound healing which differentiates it 
from adult wound healing is it's rapid, it's very efficient, it is perfect. When I say perfect, the quality of the healing of the wound is perfect and it's scarless, especially in the fetal period. Wound healing during the fetal period involves mechanisms similar to cell migration and proliferation during the embryonic uh, stages of fetal life. The cells responsible for this are embryonic stem cells, which can differentiate into all kinds of cells. And for a particular wound, they can differentiate into exactly the type of tissue that uh, needs wound healing. Fetal wound healing does not involve inflammation and it has wound contraction at a minimum rate as well as no scarring. When we are talking about abnormal wound healing in a cutaneous wound, hypertrophic scar and keloids come to our mind first. In addition to that, we would also like to talk about uh, chronic non-healing wounds. A hypertrophic scar is created due to imbalance in the collagen production and degradation. It's either overproduction or low degradation or many and few time, uh, in few incidences it is the combination of two. It usually presents as red elevated scars which are very itchy, painful as well as affect the function of that specific area. They usually appear along the line of tension and contracture can occur if the area has lax skin. Like in this photo, the scar um, has become hypertrophic across the neck and considering the neck is very lax, the fibroblast within this scar has affected significant wound contraction. So the neck extension is restricted. Keloid. Keloid is different from hypertrophic scar in a couple ways. One, it extends significantly beyond wound margins. Here in this photograph, the keloid started after the process of earlobe piercing. Earlobe piercing was only a small area above about one millimeter. Here you can see the keloid has formed over larger than two to three, uh, three centimeters of area. Keloids um, appear more often in African Americans than Asians and least in Caucasians. They are, co they are compared to a malignant growth which is locally uh, invasive but does not metastasize. Non-healing wound. A wound that fails to progress through an orderly sequence of repair in a timely fashion is called non-healing wound. For clinical description, a wound is considered to be non-healing when it doesn't show the signs of healing for three to four weeks. Causes of delayed, delayed wound healing. The most common causes of delayed wound healing are infection, tissue hypoxia, repeated trauma, presence of necrotic tissue or foreign body within the wound, uh, wound gap and systemic causes like diabetes, malnutrition, and immune deficiency. Common types of non-healing wounds are a diabetic uh, wound, a pressure ulcer, and venous stasis ulcer. Nutrition and wound healing. Cancering wound healing involves active cellular and molecular process. It needs a significant amount of nutrition. The important nutrients recognized for wound healing are vitamin C and A, proteins, especially essential amino acids, micronutrients like mag uh, magnesium, copper, zinc, and iron, as well as other micronutrients. Clinically, we like to investigate uh, serum protein and hemoglobin levels as a primary nutritional uh, lab values. Okay. So today we covered basic biology, molecular, and cellular events in the human cutaneous wound healing process. I hope it gives you an idea and gives you a background of what goes into wound healing. Thank you.